Memories of the river and the weir. Um, we used to fish in the in the river, um, down off Riverside. Rumour had it, whether it was true or not, that an old lady left part of the bank to the village for the kids to fish on. So I think it was a bit of folklore, but everybody used to go down and fish on it when we were kids. We used to catch brown trout and rainbow trout. Um, used to obviously paddle in it and fish for bullheads and other things and crayfish. Used to catch crayfish in it as well. Um, the scout up, we were all part of the scouts, that was obviously part of the river. We used to build bridges across from the scout up, straight across the river to the other side, to the trees. And obviously with the scouts it was also a lot of canoeing and boating. And we used to either carry the canoes up to just past Duke's Drive and come down the rapids. Or we'd canoe right down to Baslow. And sometimes bike, but it was normally down and then get picked up at the bottom. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of boating canoeing uh, swimming obviously um, used to jump off the bridge at the new bridge at Froggart all stand in a line and get the lorries to honk the horns as we all jumped in but it's rather dangerous because uh, if they jump off the if they jump off the bridge which is what they used to do above the weir it's now much shallower now than it used to be there it's very shallow now I haven't seen the weir recently Obviously, it's flowing a bit faster than it used to. We used to in the summer, we used to have picnics on it, and um, the bits that did have water coming down, we used to slide down on uh, bags or bin liners or uh, inner tubes. Got from the garage, Mickey's garage. Uh, and I remember it being very broken. There was huge holes in one side of it, but you could almost get in where you could get in. So we used to get in there and have a good look around. So we used to fish in that, not fish, we used to swim in the bit between the weir and the bridge because it was quite still there and quite shallow. I live at uh, Whitecroft, which is a house on Riddings Lane, um, bordering the river, uh, Derwent, in Kerber. Um, I moved here when this house was a two bedroom bungalow in 1962. I find the river to be the sound of the river to be very therapeutic. People come here and say, gosh, what's that noise? And I say, what noise? I can't hear it. But it's always in the background and it's, uh, it's part of my life, very definitely. I fish. Um, my children have fished. I've been a member of the Waltonian Angling Club for oh, 60 or more years. Um, uh, the weir is a good spot to fish from. But the river, all the way up and down the river, I can fish, and I've enjoyed that immensely. The river is very interesting because the rivers in the Peak District are one of the few places where you have almost a true native assemblage of species, although that has changed over the last few years. We have got one or two introductions, the most notable of which has come in within the last ten years, which is the alien crayfish, which has displaced our native crayfish. But having said that, the fish species are still the natural fish species that you would expect um, hundreds of years ago. For example, we've got the brown trout, we've got grayling, uh, we've got bullheads, stone loach, and species like that. The interesting thing about the grayling is it's a truly native species, uh, as is the brown trout, but the, the grayling goes back to the last ice age, and it's an ice age relic. So here we've got an example of a, an animal that has been in this area since the Ice Age retreated tens of thousands of years ago. So it's an Arctic alpine species, um, it's a circumpolar sort of boreal species, and it's one of the species that people are concerned about if we do have global warming and the temperatures rise. And uh, here we've got it in the river in front of us. But the river froze over, you know that. The year I was born, my mother could remember it. Because mm -hmm. her mother, she used to, she kept, brought her skates. And she came up, I think it was roughly 1896 mm -hmm. or something like that. And they skated, my grandma and her sister mm -hmm. went skating on it. But I think it's, uh, I think it was in... 29 it froze again and uh, it froze so solid that a horse and cart went from 
Newbridge to Lead Mill, <laughs> which is in Abbotsage. Yeah. And we used to go up one side of the river, up the coast drive, right up to the new bridge. Yeah. And then we either run across the way, if it were, if the, the water was a bit down, you see, and then come down the other side, down the stocking. Oh, it was brilliant. You know, of course, we used to um, paddle in the river and we used to c catch whiskers or bullets, you know. Ah, oh, brilliant memories. Um, it was very pleasant living there, but it was very dark because it was right in the valley. And it was, um, of course, the water, it was... The house itself was actually in the river as the water came beneath the house down the goit um, down towards the mill to power the original uh, wheels in the wheelhouse. So uh, when the war, in the winter when the river flooded the, we had a coke boiler in the cellar and the supply of coke and when the river flooded in the winter, it washed all the coke away. And of course, we, we couldn't have any heating because we couldn't get in because of the flood water. So um, that was a bit frightening. By about, um, I would say, early 90s, we were starting to get uh, really very concerned. Plainly, the weir was deteriorating very fast. And uh, it was starting to cause problems at uh, the old school, the one time church at the stocking farm. The fishing was uh, also a key factor in it, for the access for fishing, dedicated to um, Sheffield Walt Waltonians. Carver took the initial, initial uh, initiative to try and form a, a weir management committee. And to do that, we invited Kerber Carver and Froggart to join the committee. And we, wrote, we wrote to the Waltonians, we wrote to Peak Park, and we wrote to the Environment Agency. I was contacted by Bill Geary, uh, who was then Parish Council Chair, I think for Carver Parish Council. Um, essentially, the weir's in a parlous state, what can we do about it? The three parish councils, well, the, the two parish councils and the parish meeting, uh, were all in agreement, they were concerned, that if it goes, it would have a radical, make a radical difference to the riverscape, and that was something that people didn't want to see happen. Effectively, at the point in the, at a centre of the weir, where the river went across, from the crest of the weir, down to the downslope foot, there was a big, it was like a, a tooth missing, or in fact, like both teeth missing, both front teeth missing. A very big gap. The group raised, I think, forty-five thousand pounds locally to eff effectively to put a big concrete block in to hold it up while we sought the re the, the other one point eight million uh, to do it properly. Our initial interest, which was to rescue a listed building that was at risk, has been achieved. But at the same time, we're more than just looking after the, the infrastructure. It's to do with people, it's to do with permanency, it's to do with longevity. We owe a lot to Bill Geary uh, for initiating the interest, um, even though we didn't get where we wanted to be then. Uh, it's, it, it was Bill that started it and Mike that carried it on. In the area, I mean, we stood here next to a marshy bit and there's some quite... Uh, spectacular flowers but usually it's the less spectacular they're probably the, the most interesting for example there's a, a rush here a wood rush which is quite a rare one in the national park there are not many sites for it and as you can see there's a whole stand of it here which is uh, mm. which is beautiful and uh, there's some flag irises in the middle distance <coughs> looking particularly nice because they're flowering quite spectacularly <laughs> 